Hey guys, Jim Durbin here. Uh, we're going to try a little something different on the video blog. Rather than using the, the big computer, I figured we'd talk a little bit about my bookcase. Um, it's a nice IKEA bookcase. I got it so I can move it around. It's one of those that looks fine as long as you don't touch it or scratch it. But um, I, I've learned a lot of things over the years about bookcases and the best way to um, figure out what they mean. Uh, what I mean by that, and, and there is a point to there, is that someone's bookcase tells you what they read and what they want you to think that they read. But there's something else about them that I was taught by the smartest man that I, I've ever worked with. Uh, his name was Wayne Brown. He's an engineer. owns a company called Dynaloy out in uh, California. I, I thought that I'd worked with him for months and months. The reality is I think I worked with him about six or seven uh, weeks total. Um, maybe not even that long, but he gave me hours a day as we were trying to work on a, a principle. And what's fascinating is, is years later, 12 years later, I still use the stuff he taught me in those six weeks more than anything else that I've ever done. He was the smartest guy I've ever worked with. Could be the smartest person I ever met, maybe outside of my grandfather who designed airplane engines. But um, he taught me some things about bookcases, and I wanted to share with you today because as I was putting books back into uh, the case, I saw one of the books that I'd borrowed from him. So the first thing to realize is... Uh, Bookcases are intensely personal. Um, when you're sitting in front of an owner, an executive, or you're meeting someone of, of substance or uh, has some authority over your possible career, understanding what's in their bookcase can start a conversation. It can show an interest. Um, it's an opportunity for you to share some information about yourself. Uh, one of the lost things that we don't do anymore are at, let's say, cocktail parties is people aren't interesting. Um, they don't have a story to tell, and they don't have a way of impressing uh, folks who have the ability to really move their careers. And so this is where education really does make a big difference. You have to be interesting. You have to have stories to tell. And bookcases are a great place to start from those. So, for example, I'm a history major. Um, I did it because I loved it. I didn't go to school to get a job. I went to school because I enjoyed learning. Um, you can see I still have history books, uh, the works of Josephus, Ancient History, Spanish Inquisition. I still read these for fun because they fascinate me. Um, you have some books of moral out, uh, religion and philosophy here, a lot of C.S. Lewis, um, some economic stuff and others. <clears throat> you have uh, huh, the box with my crew grants. It's actually for the microphone. Uh, all the business books, as you can see, I've been to a Gary Vee thing because I, I have four of them. But, I mean, I've read everything in these shelves. So if you were sitting here doing an internship with me, um, if you're trying to figure out, hey, what does this guy know? What is he looking for? You could look at the books and see if there's an interest that we share. Because that, that's what I want to hear from you. I want to know that you're intellectually curious. Um, and then I have some fun books and stuff over here. Uh, what's interesting is if you stop and you look at the actual case, um, the, the thing that Wayne taught me, uh, it was what kind of books would you borrow? So you're looking at this and you can judge me based on what I have here. You're out and wondering if I read the books. You can maybe pull something out and see how broken in it is. But uh, one of the things he taught me was that the books exist, a bookshelf can exist to tell people what it is that you read, but it also can share what they would borrow. So I, I was looking through the books and I asked him to borrow two books. I borrowed Dune because I hadn't read it yet, and I borrowed uh, To Have or To Be, which is a very philosophical book and actually very difficult to understand. But uh, it was fascinating to read, and it, it was written at a very high level. So his point when I borrowed these books was, yes, you can judge a person by the books and try to reach some type of interest. But at the same time, the books that I borrowed had an impact on his estimation of me. Of course, I, I then returned them or offered to return them. I'm not sure why I had it. So apparently uh, my character is lacking even my intellect is curious. But these are the types of things they don't really tell you about at career uh, samples, um, you know, career seminars. And uh, it, it comes down to this. When you get hired, when you take the chance of hiring somebody, you're not really interested in, in their resume. You're not even really interested in what um, they do for you. Every, every decision to hire comes down, every interview comes down to one central point, and that point is, can I picture this person making my life uh, more interesting or easier? That's it. Um, if I'm going to hire someone, I have to train. I want to know if they're intellectually curious. I want to know what they work hard. I want to know if they do the things that uh, will eventually make my life easier. If I'm hiring them for a skill, I want to know that they're going to make my life easier right away. <clears throat> and I really do mean that. Companies don't hire because they have a need. They don't hire because they have a position. They hire because a manager went through the rigmarole and the paperwork to hire someone 
because they want to make their life easier. They want to take less off their less more stress off their uh, their plate, um, and, and just make it easier for them to run their lives. That that's all a job is. That that's why you hire people in the first place. Is my life easier or harder without this person? So the interview then becomes not a a back and forth cat and mouse question and answer game. It's not a description of your resume. It is the point of the interview is to put a picture in the head of the person interviewing you that working, the picture of you working with them makes their life easier. Really grasp onto that because our interview structures are terrible. The silly questions everyone asks, the way we try to filter, those those all have a point. But until we understand the essential aspect, the manager's trying to tell you. I want to visualize you making my life easier. If you can do that, if you can put a picture of you working, not them yelling at you, not them needing to train you, not you being a pain to come to, um, if they can visualize that, they'll hire you because everybody wants to make their life easier. That's the purpose of hiring. Of course, it's the purpose of sales and everything else. Um, whenever money is being interchanged, someone's trying to improve their life in some fashion. Not the company. But that individual manager, that individual person purchasing from you, they're trying to make their life better in some way. So what this does, um, if you have the opportunity, even if it's not an interview situation or it's just someone who can refer you, uh, the goal is to show them what type of person you are. And uh, one of the biggest mistakes I think that people make is a lack of being intellectually curious. Um, Maybe it's because I'm in a field that requires that kind of thing. Uh, maybe it's just because I am. I've always been curious about things. My family is. My uh, my friends are. My wife is. My kid. You know, it, I think it's very important because no matter what the job, at some point in today's economy, there's going to be disruptions. And intellectually curious people try to figure that out. Now, there's a spectrum. You can be so curious that you can't actually do your job. And sometimes people just hire for grunt work. It's not like if you're putting up tents at the circus that you really need to be that intellectually curious. But even then, it helps because you know what? It's hard to put up tents. There's actually a lot of physics involved. And you can learn it by trial and error. But if you're just, if you're just someone just doing the work, you're the first one that's easy to let go. So there's a, um, the overall point of this is to really take advantage of your opportunities. And the bookshelf thing still sticks with me. He was judging me of the books that I wanted to borrow in the same way that I was curious about what he read. So there was, there was a two-way thing going on there. It was almost, to some extent, he almost made it sound like it was a trap. It wasn't, of course. It was just, it was an opportunity to teach. It was the type of guy that he was. But um, there, you, you meet a lot of people in a lot of uh, different situations uh, that you have an opportunity you didn't even know it. One of the places I used to love to hire from was retail stores. Because when you go in, whether it's in a mall or a Starbucks or a food place, when you're hiring recruiters, you're looking for someone who's really good at customer service. Because a friendly person is easier to work with in terms of hiring and puts people at ease than someone who's working their butt off at a mall would be a great person to bring in and double their salary in a year and make them a good recruiter. They didn't know that. They didn't know who I was when I walked in. But I was always looking for that spark of, I want something more from life. I'm a pleasure to work with. Those are the people I would hire, far more than a stack of resumes that I knew nothing about. Um, so if you're out there, if you're looking for work, um, I want you to think that every moment of the day that you're meeting someone new gives you an opportunity. You could simply be polite in line to someone at a checkout at a grocery store and find out that there's someone who can either hire you or refer you to somebody else. You can carry on a conversation. If you're sitting there flipping through the people, you know, yeah, there's an opportunity for connection there, but um, maybe they're also looking, oh, here's just another dumb person reading a magazine. Not anything against people. Well, something against people magazine, but there are so many opportunities for you around, and every employer right now is very nervous about hiring. But you know what we aren't nervous about? Hiring an awesome person who's going to stick with us. And I, I think that you have opportunities that you're missing. And thinking about bookcases, just the why of the bookcase, knowing that people are good managers are always looking for people to hire. If you're thinking about that on a regular basis, what you'll find is that there are a lot, there's a universe of opportunities waiting for you. You just keep your eyes open and, uh, and read a book. See you guys.